Hello, in this video we will talk about evaluating pattern accuracy and how we can measure the difference between the 2D pattern and the 3D model. The easiest way to evaluate the accuracy of a model is to simply look at the colors uh, shown in pattern view on the either the 2D pattern or the 3D model. The colors uh, shown represent the, uh, the strain calculated on the mesh and uh, even though the exact flat strain legend is customizable, um, you can uh, always view the strain legend by going to the exact flat options um, and once uh, in the options panel we can go to the, uh, the legend section and we can change the strain values associated with the, um, the different colors and we get a preview down here we can change the colors we can change the strain levels or, uh, or um, uh, strain quantities to customize the legend however we want we can also click the defaults to restore it to the defaults and the strain legend is a very good way to get uh, give you an idea of the quality and accuracy of your pattern. If you have a lot of strain on your pattern, that uh, is an indication that your pattern is smaller than the actual 3D model, and you're going to have to stretch your pattern to get it to fit back onto the 3D model. If you see areas of uh, uh, gray or black that indicates uh, that we have sag or excess material so when we apply this to the uh, 3D model we're probably going to end up with uh, wrinkling or uh, puckering or loose material in that area instead of a, a tight fit so uh, the color uh, strain analysis is the uh, probably the, the first way that we get uh, an idea for the quality or the, um, the degree of fit for our pattern uh, Beyond that, there are a couple other ways uh, that we can evaluate the quality of our pattern. The uh, second easiest way is to simply measure the surface area of the pattern piece and compare it to the surface area of the uh, source model. So for this piece up here, we can use the Rhino Area command. And this one is telling us that we've got about uh, 88,000 uh, square millimeters. And if we go and compare this to the... Um, the 3D model, we'll go over to our perspective view here, we'll turn off the model, and that corresponds to this piece here. We can now take the area of the 3D model, and this one is uh, very, very similar. We are only off by um, about four square millimeters, so the 2D pattern uh, has a very, very similar surface area to the 3D model shape which is another indication that uh, we've got a fairly good pattern here and that uh, the fit is uh, very good. Another uh, way that we can uh, determine uh, uh, the quality of the pattern would be to compare the perimeter length of the different pattern pieces. So for this one, I'll start with the 3D model piece. I will select uh, this back piece here again. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the dupe border command. And this is going to create a uh, polyline uh, representation of the perimeter of this pattern piece. And we'll just drag this off to the side here so it's not directly over top. And now what we're going to do is we can use the rhino length command to determine the length of that perimeter. So the length of this perimeter is about uh, 1400 uh, millimeters. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our 2D pattern. We'll turn off the model. We'll just stay in perspective view here. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to use the dupe border command to create a uh, duplicate of the border. And now we'll use the length command again to get the uh, length of this uh, 2D pattern uh, border. So uh, the 2D pattern perimeter length is 14,030 uh, or uh, 1,434 millimeters. And the uh, model length is 1,450, so we've got a difference of about 15 millimeters. So 15 millimeters over the entire length of the perimeter isn't bad. Uh, so this is a good indicator for the quality of fit. Uh, the biggest problem with this one, though, is we don't sew pattern pieces together considering the entire perimeter. We sew edges together, so a better way to evaluate the quality of fit for this pattern piece, and even uh, um, when evaluating the edge length would be to split this uh, perimeter up into individual uh, edge segments. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the Rhino Split command. We're going to turn on point splitting. This is going to allow us to select points on the perimeter. And now we can split this curve up by selecting individual points. So all I'm doing is I'm selecting 
the division points between uh, seams here. There's one more there, one right here, and one right here. So now, after I press enter to complete the command, I've divided this uh, polyline into multiple segments. So we'll go back to the 3D model, and we will do the same thing to the 3D model curve. For, so for this one, we've got 3D on the top, 2D on the bottom. We're again going to use the split command. We're going to split points. We're going to split there, there, and we'll get the corners up here. So now we can start comparing um, corresponding edges. So this middle one here, if we do rhino length, the pattern is 221 millimeters. And if we compare the length to the model, we've got 224 millimeters. So the difference between our pattern and model is about 3 millimeters. So even though we have a difference, um, when we sew these uh, materials together, this uh, model is a car seat. The materials have a bit of stretch. So we're, we're well within acceptable tolerances. Three millimeters is not a lot. Uh, and in fact, when sewing it together, you may have a greater error or no or, or less error just because of um, if the two pieces aren't being sewn together at an even rate, uh, you may introduce error there. Um, also, we could probably reduce this difference by using some options in the exact flat optimizer. So when we go to spring, um, I'll select the back piece here. I'm only going to optimize one of them. In our pre-spring settings, we can turn on the preserve boundaries option. And we recommend starting with higher uh, tolerances first. So uh, five millimeters works very well. And if this is still not good enough, we can always lower this tolerance. We can always rerun the spring command to reduce this difference even more. So we'll click OK. And this is going to help reduce um, the, the difference. So we'll notice a, a reduction in the difference between the global perimeter of the 2D and 3D pieces, as well as per edge uh, differences. So another way to evaluate the quality is as we're optimizing, um, we can actually see the no seam stretch error. So this is the numerical difference between the 3D perimeter length and the 2D perimeter length. So before we turned on preserve boundaries, uh, the difference was around 15 millimeters. We've already reduced this difference to about 4 millimeters now. So our uh, differences are going to be a, a lot better. Um, we can also look at uh, average energy density. This is a very good metric to give us or let us know uh, the quality of our pattern. The lower this number is, uh, in, uh, the lower the strain on the pattern is. So when we've got a very, very high strain pattern, we're going to have a high average energy density. If we have a perfect pattern with zero strain whatsoever, such as a developable surface where we can simply lay the pattern on the model, we're going to have an average energy density of zero or very, very close to zero. Often we don't see absolute zero values due to um, floating point uh, error, precision error, modeling errors, but very, very close to zero is a, a very good indicator that you've got a good fitting pattern. So these are all different ways. So we've re-optimized this pattern piece using the preserved boundaries options. So what I'm going to do now is our 3D model hasn't changed, but our 2D pattern has changed. So I'm going to delete this curve. I'm going to once again use the dupe border command to create a perimeter curve. And now I'm just going to go ahead and use the length command. And our global perimeter length is 1446 millimeters. I'll select all these curves here, and the total length is 1,450. So um, as the optimization report indicated, our difference here is about 4 millimeters. And we can see this uh, even better when we start splitting this up and evaluating the per edge differences. So again, we'll use the split command. We're going to split at points. And we'll select the different points that we're going to split at. So we're going to pick the four corners here. And we'll also choose the inside corners here. So once again, we'll evaluate this middle piece. So the pattern has a length of 224 millimeters, and the 3D model has a length of 224 millimeters. Our difference has been reduced to about half a millimeter. We'll do the bottom. This one has a length of 462 millimeters, and the pattern has a length of 
460. So we have a difference of about 2 millimeters. For the bottom here, we don't actually have any uh, piece of fabric that's sewing to it. So um, this is a good thing that we've got our biggest difference on an edge that is not a seam because we don't have to worry about a right hand and left hand side being different lengths. So these are just some of the ways we can evaluate the differences between the 3D model and the 2D pattern. We can use the strain analysis that is shown by ExactFlat, and this is represented by the different colors. Uh, with the default legend, uh, white indicates zero strain, cyan is 5% strain, uh, green is 10% strain, yellow is 15%, and red is 20% or more, but the legend is customizable, so it's important that you check your legend to know what the colors represent. We can also evaluate the area of a pattern piece using the Rhino Area command. So we can compare the area of the 3D model against the 2D pattern. We can compare perimeter lengths of entire pieces. And to do that, we use the dupe border command to create a curve representation of the border. We do that on both the 3D model and the 2D pattern piece. And then we can use the length command to compare the lengths of those borders. And we can also compare per edge lengths by splitting up the curve created by the dupe border command to compare the lengths of uh, model and pattern edges. Thank you very much for watching.